Mindful Life Practice Community. So I think you guys all heard that Alexandra is going to pop in. So if you see a uh, a person step into the room, <laughs> she's joining us for practice today. And she's one of our yogis. She's in our yoga teacher training and she's uh, living in Greece. So we are doing our, our heart opening practices in this class. So opening through our shoulders, opening through our heart. Um, we did camel pose. We are working towards, we did dancer's pose. We're doing dancer's pose today. We're going to be doing wheel in the next couple of weeks. And then we're going to be doing king pigeon at the very end. So we're doing hips, shoulders, and heart. Um, so things that would be handy to have are a, um, a resistance band or a strap um, and some blocks. Okay, so let's start our practice in a seated position. Come onto your mat and then lengthen up through the heart and allow the palms to be face up as an intention of openness. Take deep breaths in and out. And as you breathe in and out, can you slow down the rhythm of your breath? Taking deep, expansive, filling inhales. And then deep, expansive, filling exhales. Well, I guess expansive is a bad word to describe exhales as they're really emptying. <laughs> so let's take expansive inhales. And emptying exhales. And allow the breath to be a doorway into the present moment. And as you step into the present moment, you step into the middle. The middle being here and now. and set an intention for this hour that we're spending together. We're working on opening our hearts. So your affirmation could be something like, I am healing. I'm feeling. Maybe even I love this body. Take one more breath as we are. And then can you gather your palms together at your heart center? All right, join the arms up overhead. And then we'll interlace the palms and reach the arms over to the right. Good, lift the arms all the way up and then stretch them over to the left. Good, let's lift all the way up. We're gonna release that grip and then twist towards the side, land the left palm, gaze over the right shoulder.
and then take the arms all the way back. And then can you twist the other way, gaze over the left shoulder. And then let's take our arms all the way up, lift the arms up, take the palms into heart center. Good, we're gonna come onto the hands and knees and do a few cat cows. I'm gonna tell you something I, a reflection I've had the past couple of days while hosting Alexandra at my house. You know, after I became sober and became very focused on building the mindful life practice, I stopped having people over to my home. And as my home, of course, we ha were having a pandemic, so most people weren't really having people over anyway, but <laughs> my home, as it became a place of business as well, became really chaotic and not super functional. It was super messy. I wasn't very proud of it. And... As a result, I just like never had guests. We're gonna come into neutral, leave the left palm, lift the right arm up, good. And then thread the right arm underneath the left. And then we'll lift the left arm around. Something that I'm not good at is like organizing. You know, I'll just leave my yoga props wherever. or not doing the dishes right away and leaving them in the sink. And when you have a guest coming over, you're like, okay, <laughs> I need to sort this out. <laughs> Let's unwind, land the left palm, come all the way up, and then we're gonna go the opposite way, okay? So lift the left arm up, and then thread the left arm under. And then weave the arm around. And then it's not only that, like I need to clean the apartment, but it's also like, I need to, you know, have some food in the fridge. <laughs> I need to host this person. I need to have snacks available. I need to like make her mocktails. <laughs> and in, in spending time to make it the house more of a home, I realized that it was also an act of self-love towards myself, right? It wasn't just an act of generosity towards my guests. It was an act of generosity towards myself. Let's unwind and place the right palm back down, place the left palm back down and spread through the fingers, spread through the palms, tuck the toes, lift up and back. And then pedal through the knees. I'm just finding that I'm enjoying myself more now that I'm actually putting effort into, you know, what my home looks and feels like. And it's funny how sometimes we think like, oh, I live alone, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but I'm realizing in the past couple of days that it does matter and it does make a difference. Come into neutral. And then let's bend the knees, gaze forward and, and step the feet up to meet our hands. So in an intention of self-love, that's an act of self-love I'm gonna be working on towards myself. Let's half lift so we reach through the spine, let our fingertips brush the shins, exhale, fold, and then bend through the knees and sit back, lift the arms up. And then take the palms into our heart center. We're gonna rotate into a little bit of a twist. So we're gonna place our right elbow onto our left knee and gaze over the left shoulder. Good, come all the way back. Rotate left knee onto the right shoulder, or sorry, right knee, left, left elbow onto the right knee. <laughs> you guys all know what you're doing. <laughs> take one more breath and then come to neutral. Press up to stand, take the palms into heart center and let's do our shoulder openers before Alexandra is here because I only have one strap. <laughs> so take your hands onto your strap and then we're gonna do circles with the arms up overhead. So your hands can be as wide as you need to on the strap and if they don't come all the way around, it's okay. They might go halfway. We're building mobility in our shoulders, which are ball and socket joints, if you want some anatomy words. <laughs> We're doing anatomy in my yoga teacher training. 
um, in the throat chakra training this month. And I find myself saying the most random things now in yoga classes, like supinate your hands. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, what does that mean? <laughs> I'll explain later on. <laughs> Do one more. <laughs> and then let's just release the strap, but you can keep your strap nearby. Actually, you can keep it in your hands if you want to use it for the next thing. So we're going to do cow face arms. So you can place your right palm on your left shoulder. And then maybe your left fingertips come up to grip. Maybe you grip the hands onto your strap. Holding here for a couple of breaths. And then we'll go the opposite way. So we'll release that. Take the left hand up. And then wiggle around making our cow face arms. Staying here for three. For two. And then one, release the grip, release that strap to the side. Ah, she's home. <laughs> Open the arms into cactus arms and then thread the right arm underneath the left. And maybe you high five the hands together. Maybe you grip opposite shoulders. Taking three, taking two, and then on one, let's unwind the arms and then take them the opposite way. So left arm comes underneath the right elbow, can grip opposite shoulders or high five the hands together. Nice work team. Feeling the shoulders unstick and just notice what sensations arise. Release your grip and take your arms, lift them all the way up towards the sky. And then exhale, come into a fold. Take your inhalation halfway lift so fingers can brush the shins, extend through the crown of the head. And then exhale, lower your palms back down, step the feet back, find your plank. Nice work. We were working on our planks in my other yoga teacher training yesterday. And I'm gonna turn so you guys can see how I'm lining up. So you want shoulders stacking above the wrists, heels almost stacking above the toe mounds and you can modify with your knees down. That's a great expression. Holding strong, pushing the ground away. Imagine that there's like a string attaching to the space between the shoulder blades and it's just lightly lifting up. Hold for three, good for two. And then on one, let's slowly lower, elbows going all the way down, and then breathe your heart lift up. Good, exhale to lower back down, and then shift through a tabletop. Good, spread the palms, tuck the toes, lift up and back to a down dog. Let's do some little low lunge flows. So leave our left foot, take our right leg up towards the sky, and then draw the right knee in, Step the right foot between the palms. Oh, the cat is here. Get the whole family. <laughs> Let's land onto the left knee and then lift our arms up towards the sky. Hello. <laughs> and then you might open the arms into your eagle arms again and then wrap the right arm underneath the left. Good, staying there for a few breaths. Yay. <laughs> nice, let's unwind the arms and lift them all the way up. And then reach the arms forward. We're gonna leave our left arm where it is, spiral our right arm all the way back. Good, take a breath in. And then reach the left palm forward on the inside of the left foot. Sorry, right foot, yeah, you got it. And then maybe you kick the foot back, taking a bit of a quad stretch. You can modify by using your strap. Leanne is a great example of doing that. And know that any modifications, any adjustments, any props don't mean that you're bad at yoga. It doesn't mean that you're a beginner. 
the sign of an advanced practice is not at all what you can physically do with your body. It's not what we do, it's how we're doing it, right? It's the loving kindness, it's the mindfulness we're applying to this moment and the poses are just a vehicle. Good, let's release the left foot, take the right palm forward and then just walk the fingertips back, lengthen over the right leg, take a breath in and then hinge your body forward. Good, taking three breaths. Two. Good, one more. Nice work, let's walk our palms forward and then tuck through the left toes, lift through the left knee, reach the right arm all the way up, you got it. And then roll into your side plank. So you step the right foot back, good. Scoop the arm under and up for three. Nice work for two, good. And then one, lift the arm all the way back. And now just land your right palm and we're gonna do a one minute plank. <laughs> I think everyone has heard this story by now but I'm gonna say it again in case you haven't heard it. <laughs> we found out one week <laughs> and Alexandra has the cat underneath her. Um, we found out one week that Alexandra and Matt were doing one minute planks every single day on WhatsApp and us in the yoga teacher training group, we were really offended. And the true story is that they actually suggested it in front of the whole group. And we were all like, that sounds like a horrible idea. We're not going to do it. And then they just did it. <laughs> and we're like, we're so offended that you excluded us, but we didn't want to do it anyway. But anyway, since she's here, we're going to one minute plank and I haven't been watching the time but that feels like about a minute. Okay, take one more breath. <laughs> and then land the knees down and slowly lower all the way down. Take a breath in, lift your heart. And then exhale back down. And then press through the palms, shift through the knees, lift up to a down dog. <laughs> the cat has left the room, but I've been insisting that Alexandra sleep with the door closed. <laughs> Princess seems like a really nice cat. She's super friendly, except at five in the morning when she's like <laughs> walking across your throat. <laughs> but she can be part of our practice. She's friendly in the practice. <laughs> Let's take our left leg up, take a big breath in. And then we're gonna pull the left knee in and step the left foot between our palms. Nice job. And then land onto the right knee. Lift the arms all the way up, big breath in. And then open our arms into cactus arms. You got it, take your left arm underneath your right and either grip your palms together or grip opposite shoulders, choosing the modification that works best for you. Good, take one more breath. And then let's unwind our arms, lift our arms up towards the sky, big breath in. Good, reach your arms forward, leave your right arm where it is, lift your left arm all the way back. Good, take a breath in. And then reach forward, right palm on the inside of the left foot. Good, option one, stay. Option two, send your left palm back. Good, maybe you take a quad stretch. Modifying in whatever way sees fit for you, whatever feels right, whatever works. And know that there's no one way to do a pose. I think old school yoga used to say that everyone's trikonasana or everyone's lunge should look a certain way, but in reality, we all have different bodies. So it's just impossible. Take one more breath. Good, release the right foot. You can take the left palm forward, walk the fingertips back, invite length along the left leg and hinge your heart forward for three. Good, for two. And then one, let's walk our palms forward, plant through our right palm, tuck our right toes, you got it. Lift your left arm up, nice. And then step the left foot all the way back, come into your side plank. Did we scoop the arm under and up? Yeah, we did, good. <laughs> I have my co-teacher here who can remind me if I've forgotten. I was too busy telling the plank story to remember. <laughs> do one more and then land your left palm let's do a one minute plank here <laughs> just 
JK, just JK, let's move through a flow when you're ready. <laughs> Lowering down. Lifting your heart. And then arriving all the way up and back to your down dog. And then once again, we're gonna land the knees onto the mat. And we're gonna do a little bit more heart opening. So we're gonna leave our left knee where it is, extend our right leg behind us, and then lift our left arm up, good. So generally here, you want your spine to be in one long line. And then take a breath in with the extension. And then exhale, curl your elbow in to meet your knee. Nice, can you do this three more times? Big breath in. Good, big breath out. Good, two more. Good, one more. Good, inhale, lift your arm, lift your leg. Now maybe you kick your right foot back and you take your left palm back and you open through the heart. So we're practicing different heart openers, different quad stretches to lead us towards our peak pose, which is called Natarajasana dancer's pose. And this is a style of yoga teaching called Vinyasa Krama. And what that means is that it's intelligent sequencing towards one peak pose and doing different things along the way. Release your hand, release your foot, land your palm, land your knee and do some cat cows. I'm really good at like starting to talk a lot in like the most uncomfortable and hardest to hold poses. <laughs> good, just do one more cat cow. And then come all the way into a neutral. And then let's explore the opposite way. So your left leg extends, your right arm extends. Good, take a breath in. And then tap elbow to meet the knee. Yeah, good, you got it. Nice, two more. Good, last one. Nice, extend the arm and extend the leg. And then can you kick back with your left foot and your right palm making a connection? And generally you want your foot stepping on the ceiling so your foot is flexed here and you're grabbing hold of the ankle. Nice, yeah, good, good adjustments. Take one more breath. Nice work. And then release the foot, release the hand, come all the way back to your table and then a few more cat cows. And we're gonna move through another standing flow. But we're not gonna do a mandala flow because I feel like that will be too confusing since you can't see our side bodies today. <laughs> so just a normal flow. Come all the way into a neutral and then tuck the toes, lift up and back down dog. Leave your left foot where it is, lift your right leg up towards the sky. And then we're gonna draw the right knee in, come all the way forward into a core plank. Now you can always lower the knee. That's a great adjustment. Lift the right leg up, tap right knee to right elbow. Nice work. Lift the right leg all the way up, tap your right knee to your left elbow. Good, lift the right leg all the way up again. And then step the right foot between the palms. Press through the feet and lift the arms all the way up. Nice work. All right, now let's do that same um, arm variation we did earlier. So we're gonna open our arms into cactus, good. Take the right arm underneath the left, high five the hands together, and then go with the flow, curling, and then lifting. Nice work. Good, take one more breath. Excellent, now can you shift weight onto your right foot, extend your left leg behind you? And then perhaps you come all the way up and stack your left thigh on top of the right, sit back, this is your eagle, your Garudasana. Nice. Take three, take two. On one, take the knee all the way up. And then can you step the left foot all the way back? Good, land your left heel so you open into a warrior two, you got it. Take a breath in and then hinge forward with this arm variation. So this is humbled warrior with your eagle arms. 
And if the arm variation is not suitable, feel free to just release it, let go, unwind. You always have that option. Can you press through the feet and lift up? Nice, and then unwind the arms. Right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back, good. Reverse your warrior so your left palm comes onto the left thigh and then take the right palm forward. Good, extended side angle, you got it. And then just do three more. Good. Two more. All right, last one. And then eventually land the right elbow onto the right thigh and lift the left arm up. Good. So I said the, uh, the word supinate earlier and I was like, I'm gonna tell you what that means later on. <laughs> supinate is when you flip your palm face up. <laughs> and I remember when I was trying to memorize these anatomy terms on my first yoga teacher training, I always need these little codes and tricks and cues or else I'm gonna forget. So I said supinate, it's like holding a bowl of soup. <laughs> and the opposite would be pronate, which is our palm facing down. And if our palms pronated, then we're gonna drop the soup. <laughs> so I'll flip the palm face up and supinate it. <laughs> Good, take one more breath. And then can you press through both feet, lift up. Good, lengthen through the right leg. Now shorten your stance a tiny bit. Reach the right palm forward. Good, clock your right arm alongside your right calf. Lift your left arm up. Excellent job. Nice, and now can you shift weight onto your right foot and right fingertips, landing in your Ardha Chandrasana, your half moon. And then if you wanna kick your left palm back and get into a quad stretch with the left leg, go for it knowing that it's an option and if you fall, that is okay because failures are part of the human experience. Take one more breath and then extend your left leg, extend your left arm, step your left foot to meet your right. Good, find a forward fold. Grip palms to opposite elbows. <sighs> Actually, I posted something today about failures and, and growth, I posted, on Instagram, my logo as it's progressed over the course of two years. And it was actually two years ago that I founded my first life coaching business, which was alexmcrobs.com, which failed. <laughs> I posted all the logos that I had done over the years, designs that weren't so successful. And I wrote about all the failures and all the struggles that have brought me to this point. And I think sometimes we look at people and think that success has, has come easily when in reality, it's a pretty long road of, of failures. And, and the same can be true with many yoga poses, right? A lot of us fell and failed before we were ever able to hold some poses. Let's release the palms. Good, take your inhalation halfway, let's lengthen. And then exhale to fold again, bend through the knees, sit the hips back, lift the arms up. Nice, and now let's gather the palms into the heart center. Inhale, lift at the elbows. <laughs> Rotate the right elbow onto the left knee, gaze over the left shoulder. Good, take three and two. And then on one, come all the way back up and then we'll rotate the opposite way. So left elbow onto the right knee, guys, three, two, one, lift up, breath in, exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. And then option here to move through a flow or just step back to down dog or grab a sip of water, whatever you need. Need some water? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have a cup for you. <laughs> Alexandra has been walking all over the city. Walked like 20 kilometers yesterday. I was like, I probably walked one. <laughs> We've been pretty lucky in Abu Dhabi to have really nice walking weather. You have some? Okay, good. <laughs> Take your left leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. 
and then draw your left knee in core plank. So we're gonna come all the way forward. Good. Left leg up, three-legged dog. Left knee to tap, left elbow. Nice work, lift all the way up. Left knee is gonna tap to your right elbow. Good, lift all the way up. And then step the left foot between the palms. Excellent, let's lift our arms all the way up and then open our arms into cactus arms. And then this time weave the left arm all the way underneath the right and curve the spine inwards and then open it. Go ahead, doing one more. And then see if you can shift weight onto the left foot. Extend the right leg, balancing on the left foot. Good, now can you transition to stack the right thigh on top of the left? Sit low for a few breaths. And then lift to the right knee all the way up. And then step the right foot all the way back. Bring your body into this warrior two, take a breath in, and then humble the heart forward with your eagle arm variation, letting your head and neck go. Can you take one more breath? And then press through the feet, lift all the way up. Nice work. Unwind your arms, extend them. And then can you move like water and end like fire? Reverse the warrior and then come forward. Elbow to the knee. Good. Three more. Good. Two more. Good, last one. And then land the left elbow onto the left thigh, reach the right arm overhead. Good, take another breath. And then press through the feet, lift all the way up, lengthen the left leg. Can you shorten the stance slightly? Reach the left arm forward, left calf alongside, left arm reach the right arm up. Nice, and now can you shift weight onto the left foot and left fingertips, find your Ardha Chandrasana, your half moon, perhaps you kick the foot back and grab hold of the ankle, making a connection. And then release that grip and bring your body back into your forward fold, your spinal flexion. And you can grip opposite elbows or perhaps you hook your fingertips onto your big toes. Maybe you thread your palms face up underneath your feet and you're like massaging your wrists with your toes. Good, take another breath. And then release your grip. Good, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, and then press through the soles of the feet, lift the arms all the way up. And then gather the palms into the heart center and then just stay anchored for a moment with the palms together, the thumbs connecting to the heartbeat, the shoulders soft. And can you find the silence at the heart of the pose? Now 
Now let's leave our left foot where it is. We're gonna open up our right knee to the side. So we're gonna do two balancing poses. First one is our tree pose. Right foot can be the inside of the ankle or the shin or maybe all the way up onto the thigh, pressing the palms together. I think we're the same height. <laughs> We have had this ongoing conversation in the Mindful Life practice all year for anyone that hasn't been part of the conversation yet of it's going to be so weird when we meet in real life and we find out how tall everyone is <laughs> because on Zoom, we're all just little boxes, right? Anyway, we posted our picture last night and Lee, <laughs> Lee's response was, are you guys the same height? <laughs> Let's release our right foot and then we're gonna switch it up. And we joked about, you know, drawing lines on the wall and lining up and then we just thought we wanted to <laughs> open the knee to the side, place the foot on the inside of the right leg somewhere, anchoring the palms at heart center. That will be uh, the icebreaker at the first Mindful Life Practice Bali retreat. <laughs> this will be height measurement. <laughs> Just kidding. Height doesn't matter. <laughs> Take one more breath in this tree. And then we'll press the left foot all the way back down. So we're going to practice our dancer's pose, our Nadara Jasana. If you want to go into one of the earlier balancing poses, feel free. Um, and if you do want to come into Nadara Jasana, dancer's pose, we're going to have our elbow bent, our palm supinated, so face up. <laughs> and then you can kick your right foot back, okay? And this is gonna engage your, through your quad. And then reach through the inside of the right foot. Good. So sometimes I see people holding on to the outside of the right foot. I don't know if there's anything anatomically wrong. I think it's just safer for your shoulder if it's possible to grip the inside of the foot. That was how I, I learned. And then what you're going to do is lift your arm up and then see if you can remain upright by kicking your heart back. And then when you cannot kick any further back, you can lean your heart forward and try to keep your right hip level with your left here. So there's this tendency for us to want to deepen our back bend by stacking the hip. And I want you to try to level the right hip with the left. Beautiful. Just stay for three, for two. And then one, come all the way up to stand, place your right foot, take the palms at heart center, take an inhale, take an exhale. One more inhale. Good, one more exhale. And then we'll go the opposite way. So your left palm will open, kick your left leg up, Plant the left palm on the inside of the left foot and lift the right arm up. And then slowly just start to tilt forward, finding your dancer's pose. Good, for three. For two. And then one, come all the way up. Land the left foot, take the palms at heart center, close the eyes. There is clarity and contrast. Clarity and contrast when we shift from balancing poses to being anchored on both feet. Clarity and contrast from the chaos of our lives to when we step on our yoga mats. What other places in your life do you find and feel clarity and contrast? I'd take one more breath. And we're going to slowly start to wind down. We're going to come into our pigeon pose. So let's inhale, lift our arms up towards the sky. Look up. Good. Exhale, fold all the way forward. Take your in breath, half lift. Good. Take your exhale, fold. And if you want to take a vinyasa, go ahead, or you might just sit back to your down dog, your choice. Let's leave our left foot where it is. 
lift the right leg all the way up. And let's draw the right knee in. Nice, lay the right shin across the width of the mat. Good, wiggle your left knee back. Nice, and you can always do this on your spine. Take a breath in. Oh, the birthday girl is going. Come on to the elbows. Have a great birthday, Jules. Oh, she already left. We love Jules. <laughs> Good, so you can come to rest your, your head. I've been thinking about, um, so my ex used to tell me about this movie called Sliding Doors, and I've actually never seen it, but I reference it all the time, so I probably should see it, so I know what I'm talking about. But the premise of this movie is that the main character misses his subway commute by a millisecond, right? Like he misses the sliding door, the door slides closed, and because he missed his commute, that was how he met someone that changed the course of his life. And I've been thinking about this meme I came across on Instagram about how, you know, the moment when you meet a stranger, you have no idea how that stranger might become so important to you and change the course of your life. Right. And it's not just in romance, it's in friendship too. It's all of us. Right. A lot of us has sliding door moments of how we met and how we became connected. And here we are years later, part of this like really amazing community. Take one more breath in our pigeon pose. Good. And then we'll come all the way up onto our palms. Nice, and then tuck our toes, lift all the way up to our down dog. And then go the opposite way. So left leg can lift up and the knee can come across the mat. Like Nadia, for example, who's part of our yoga teacher training, we, she was one of my yoga students, take a breath in and then you can come onto the elbows. And the only reason I had her on Instagram was I, she mentioned she wanted to come on the, the yoga retreat I was supposed to be taking to Nepal in March of 2020. So I said to her, oh, follow me on Instagram, I'll send you the link. And that was like a few weeks before the pandemic. And had we not had that moment where I shared with her my contact, she would have never found out about the mindful life practice and she never would have been part of it, right? And isn't that so interesting how these sliding door moments can change our lives, right? A few months before the pandemic, I was given a yoga class time slot at 7.30 p.m. And it wasn't the style of yoga I normally teach. I had never taught yin before. I didn't like being up that late because I had to get up for work at like five in the morning. <laughs> but that was the yoga class that Alexandra, would come to and it was the first time we ever met because that was what worked for her schedule and I think about those sliding door moments right had I never started teaching that yoga class we would have never met and then two years later we would never be friends making mocktails together and isn't that wild you just think of these sliding door moments take one more breath exactly as we are in pigeon Good, and then lift all the way up. Nice, and we're just gonna roll onto our left thigh and come all the way around just like this. Right leg extends, left foot lands on the inside of the right thigh, lift the arms up, and then come forward. Good, like, actually I was just thinking Laura is another sliding door moment. I just happened to sub the yoga class that Laura went to and that was how we met. And it's, it's so cool. A few hours later, I was out to dinner and my friend said, oh, I saw your yoga class on my friend's Instagram story. And that was Laura's Instagram. <laughs> I went and followed her and, you know, life is about connection and community. And I'm just so grateful for all these moments that you look back on and you think they're just little moments, but they're very significant because they all strung together and created this beautiful community that we we have today. I'm, I'm super grateful for that.
take one more breath. Good, and then walk all the way up and then we'll switch it. Good, lifting the arms all the way up and then reach forward. And I could go on and on and tell the story of how I met every single pers here, person here, but I'll save that for another day. You're all special. <laughs> I appreciate you all. So as we're winding down, I invite you to link back to that intention at the start of the practice, whether it was I'm healing or I'm feeling or I'm practicing love towards myself or I'm forgiving, whatever it was that resonates with your heart chakra. Just revisit it now. Good, and then let's come all the way back up. Bring our legs to cross. We'll do one more, actually two more things I lied. Just a little neck stretch. So drop the right earlobe down towards the right shoulder. Anchor the right palm. So we'll just do a little neck stretch and then a little bit of a twist. Good. Take another inhale, take another exhale, and then lift the head all the way up. And then we'll go the opposite way. So left earlobe drops towards left shoulder, ankle or the left palm on the side of the skull, stretch through the right traps muscle. And then lift the head all the way up. And we'll come onto the spine and you just do one little spinal twist before we settle into stillness. If you roll all the way onto the back and open the arms into cactus arms and then drop the knees over to the right. And you can send the gaze over the left shoulder. Take another breath, open the right arm. Let's draw the knees up through center and then send them the opposite way. And then let's just open our arm, take our knees all the way up. Give our body one last little hug or just grip the opposite shins if that's more suitable for you. And then you can slowly stretch out into your final resting pose, whatever that looks like for today, just for a moment or two knowing that I'm gonna bring you back when the time is up.
Please prepare me to be sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Please prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Give your body a little bit of a wake up wiggle. Nice stretch through the spine. Nice, gently making our way into a little ball and then upwards to seated with the palms at the heart center. And we close with our intention the ancient intention, but the original intention of this practice that we all love so much. And it was passed with heart from my yoga teacher, Rolf, and I pass it onwards to you. And it's that our practice remain a constant and our hearts remain continuous on this path and that our efforts be of service and benefit to all beings everywhere. May we all be safe. May we all be happy, healthy, and free. May we walk on the path towards freedom. And so let's Sign off with an ohm sound and we're going to inhale and exhale and then inhale through to make an ohm. So take a big breath in and a big breath out. Big breath in. Thank you so much for joining, for sharing this space and the practice, the light in me, it sees and it honors the light in you. Thank you. Thank you, yogis. I'm gonna stop this recording.